be looking at two passages of Scripture this morning. So if you'll find Mark chapter 14, John chapter 12. You know, one of the things Jesus never had to concern Himself about was the crowds as far as having one. Because everywhere He went, there was a crowd. People just were drawn to Him kind of like steel to a magnet. And as He went about the countryside preaching and teaching and healing and uh, all that He did, people just came to Him. Some came for, for the right reasons. Some came for the wrong reasons. The question so many times was just what is the intent of the crowd? Uh, some were anxious and excited to hear Him and see His miracles. Some even experienced those firsthand. But then there were those who, in those same crowds, and it's no different today in churches, there are some in the same crowds who would love to trap Jesus in some kind of controversy, to trip up the pastor as he brings the word with some rhetoric, or even in Jesus' day, they even wanted to stone him. But regardless of what you felt about Jesus and which side of that that you might would fall on, whether you loved him or whether you hated him. You couldn't ignore it. Amen. You just couldn't ignore it. So in this passage of Scripture, these two passages I want to share with you today, we're going to look at John chapter 14 first, or chapter 12, excuse me, and then Mark 14. There are two instances here. Some theologians, some scholars would say, well, it's the same instance, but I really believe it's two different accounts. Two different happenings. Both happened in Bethany. We find one happening in the home of a leper, the other happening in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. We find one lady anointing his feet, another anointing his head. So we, we, we have two accounts here, and the Bible is too particular on details to give these kind of details without it being two, two separate accounts, I firmly believe. But what we do know is both of these happened the week prior to his crucifixion. Both of them are genuine acts of worship. And so what I want to share with you this morning is genuine worship. What is it? What is it? So if you will look with me at Acts, or excuse me, at John chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, and following down to verse 8. And then we'll go to Mark. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who was be, had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him, with Jesus. Then Mary spoke, a, a, oh, excuse me, Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why is this fragrant oil not being sold for 300 denarii, or one year's salary, and given to the poor? This he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And he had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you will have with you always, but me you do not have always. Now if you go back with me to Mark, Mark chapter 14, and we begin again in the first verse. Mark 14, 1. After two days it was the Passover and the feast of the unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, here we have a different location, he sat at the table, and a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard, and she broke the flask and poured it on his head, Mary on his feet. 
But there were some who were indignant among themselves, and they said, why is this fragrant oil wasted? And let me just stop right there a minute. Let me tell you something. Anything you do for the honor and glory and praise of the Lord Jesus Christ is never wasted. Amen. Never wasted. Verse 5, for it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii, again, a year's salary, and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good thing for me. For you have the poor with you always, and wherever you wish to do for them, and do, do, do them good. But me you do not always have. She has done what she could she has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. And surely I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Brother Eric, would you lead us in a word of prayer as we begin this morning? Uh, let's pray. Father, we just come before you from Just thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the special music that really touched my heart, Lord. I, again, I just love these people, and I'm glad that you sent them out here, Lord, because uh, uh, I needed them. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I just thank you for them, and please break our hearts for your message, break our hearts for the word, Lord. Just again, thank you for David and his wife, and uh, I just just love them, love them dearly. Mm -hmm. Just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, son. We'll give you four things this morning out of these acts of worship that we need to take with what was true in Jesus' day and what was true in those two settings is true today. Okay, Nothing has changed. Jesus is still Jesus. He is still Lord. He's still on the throne. He still deserves our praise. He still deserves our honor. He still deserves our glory. And He is the one that we worship. If you've come here for any other reason today than to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't mean to be rude, but you may be excused. Mm -hmm. You may be excused. But that's what we do today. Okay? That's all we do. Well, let me, let me just give you some things right out of this passage of Scripture that I think we need to hear. First, worship can occur anywhere. Amen. This is a nice setting. It's a nice building. We did a lot of work yesterday making it nice and accommodating and comfortable and all those sort of things. But if you think that the only place and the only time you can worship is when you arrive in the building on Sunday morning, folks, you got the wrong idea of worship. Amen. Worship can occur anywhere. What is necessary for worship? Someone to be worshipped and a worshiper. Okay? We are the worshipers. He is to be worshipped. So wherever you are, whatever you do, driving down the road in your automobile, Keep your eyes on the road, but you can still worship, okay? okay? If you really get excited about worshiping and there's a good song on the radio and you're just praising the Lord and wanting to raise your hand, just do one, okay? You kind of hold the wheel with the other. I may be coming the other direction. But worship can happen anywhere. This past week, I've experienced that in, in ways, and I shared last night. Uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, one of the guys who comes to the Cowboy Church, he's our neighbor over there, just met him here recently. And uh, he's been coming to the Cowboy, had missed since, he, since we invited him to come. And uh, he's a guy from South Carolina, of all things. And we're just right, right across the road from each other. But he invited me to go on a cattle drive, and it was my first cattle drive. And man, I was really excited about that. It's been a long day in the saddle. Monday afternoon, we gathered the cattle for about five hours on Tuesday. I saddled up and was in the saddle about quarter to seven on Tuesday morning. I unsaddled my horse at 7.30 Tuesday night. I was a little bit weary by the time I finished that up. But here was the thing. We were out on the back side of nowhere on the other side of the reservation. We drove 40 miles down a gravel road to get to where we was going to gather cattle, okay, on, that, on Monday afternoon. And got back over there. And I mean, you know, you, you got no cell phone, sir. You know you're out in the country. When you got no cell phone, sir. And your Verizon don't go everywhere, we found out. So I just left the thing in the truck. But we were out there. And it, for me, it was just a really kind of a spiritual experience. And I was out there and I was, you know, I was hearing the cattle and watching them and all of God's creation. And, you know, and there's about 10 of us out there and the dogs are working and they're moving us. And I said, man, you know, 
Somebody, somebody asked me the other day, said, so how do you like that? I said, brother, we're just living the dream. That's, that's all I tell you, just living the dream. But I, 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 there was one point that I was kind of just riding on the, riding the right flank. And I kind of had ridden down off of the hill and, and uh, we were watching the cattle were coming by and I was kind of keeping them gathered up. And, and I was watching and as far as I could see ahead of me, I couldn't see the beginning of the drive. And the cattle were as far back behind me coming still out over the hill. Well, 1,200 head. That's a pretty good size herd, I would think. Amen. And I'm just watching them come in through. And I hear the, you know, the, the old cows, they're moving and trying to find their calves. And calves are bellowing, trying to find their moms. And, you know, but the, the trees were just gorgeous in color. The sun was shining. There was a breeze blowing. And I'm doing one of the things I love to do most, and that was on my horse. And I think I see that. There's not one thing that I've ever done to deserve that day. Not one thing. The Lord blessed me with that. And although I had to keep my mind on what I was doing, watch where I was going, keep the cows gathered up. I was able to worship because I had my focus on the Lord Jesus. Think about him. And he had provided all that. Let me enjoy, enjoy that experience. So the key here, regardless of where you are, you can worship anywhere if you got your focus right. Does that make sense? Amen. If you got your focus right. Who do we focus on to worship? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. These two ladies and these two accounts, there was all kinds of things going on around them. There was a dinner. There were crowds. There were people who were talking. There were, there were conversations that were going on. <coughs> Excuse me. But their focus, wherever he was in that room at that table, wherever they came from into that room, I don't think they ever took their eyes off of Jesus. Because we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If we do that, we're going to be able to worship him. Regardless of our circumstances, regardless of the location, regardless of what's going on around us, what other people might be saying, it doesn't matter. Just have your focus right. So worship can occur anywhere, but secondly, worship is spontaneous. Worship is spontaneous. You can't plan worship. Okay? You just can't plan. You can't program it. You can't organize it. You can't put it in a bulletin. You know, we're going to stand up, we're going to pray here, we're going to sing this, we're going to take up an offering. Then we're going to worship. It doesn't happen that way. Amen. If we come with a spirit of worship, we come with the, the idea that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be our focus today, and He's going to be the one we worship. Worship will happen before you ever leave home. Amen. Listen, if you come with the idea that once I get to church, I'm going to worship, you missed it. The chances are you're not going to catch up. Amen. It will happen and we'll, we'll dismiss you. Go, well, what? I, I missed it today. Why did you miss it? You didn't come to worship. You didn't come prepared to worship. You weren't worshiping on the way. Okay? Worship has to be spontaneous. And it can happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I had that turn on my horse in the middle of nowhere. And it just, worship just happened. It just happened. I didn't plan that. You know, I, that that wouldn't that that although I, I try to just be aware and cognizant of his presence and what he's doing all the time, I didn't plan that. Okay? You can't plan it. Have you ever been in a service and you just really felt and sensed the presence of the Lord? Oh man. You know, I mean the Holy Spirit is just like the Holy Spirit rained down as we sing sing that song, rain down. 
The Holy Spirit just came down that day and there was such a sense and awareness of the presence of God in the, in the building, in the hearts of the people. And you could hear it in the songs that they sang. You hear it in the prayers that were offered. You could hear it in the preaching. And you knew it in the invitation because people filled the altar. You said, man, what a day. I hope next Sunday we can duplicate that. You can't duplicate it. As much as you love to duplicate it, worship is spontaneous. It just happens. It just happens. So we got to be ready for it when it occurs. Yeah, you know, this this thing of the, the order of service. If sometimes I like to come in, don't be surprised if I do. I like to come in some Sunday morning and just start preaching, brother. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be wonderful? Just to get, just be so filled with the Spirit of God and so corrected by Him that the, I just walk up here and say, "Take your Bibles, read some of the Word." Yeah. Okay, we'll sing it in there. We got plenty of time to sing. Just, just, just preach. Just bring the message. Okay, worship's got to be spontaneous. And it's got to be, you know, it's just what it's what we do in honor and glory and praise to Him. So many times, and, and, and this this is true. You know, we we get so caught up in the way we do it and how we do it and when we do it and where we do it and all that sort of thing. Someone once said that we start at 11 o'clock sharp and end at 12 o'clock dull. <laughs> you know, it should never be. It should never be that way. Won't be that way in heaven, that's right. The worship, when it's genuine worship, it, it just happens. It's not an ordered thing that we do.